Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. Thanks for joining us. My name is Steve Garson from SD-WAN Experts, and uh, I have with, with me uh, David Klebanov from Alkira. And uh, I thought uh, this would be a valuable thing for my clients and uh, other people out there in the enterprise world. First, a little background. Uh, I am the uh, head of SD-WAN Experts. We have uh, 20 years' experience in the wide area network space, uh, specifically working with enterprises and uh, most, cur most currently working with SD-WAN and SASE. Uh, we help uh, enterprises around the world to uh, define their requirements and to generate RFPs, uh, evaluate uh, solution providers, and then take them to the proof of concept process negotiate contracts, and implement their uh, WAN transformation. Um, we're vendor independent. One of the things that's unusual in this business is to find companies like ours that have no vested interest in any particular technology provider. We're going to do what's best for the client. And we do that uh, by engaging and starting with the assessment of their network, design and sourcing, and then we take it through implementation, and help our clients with the management of their networks. Uh, I want to introduce uh, David Klebanov. David is uh, his company of, was of great attraction to us because all of our clients have been uh, planning to go to the cloud, or they've already built the cloud infrastructure. And really, without exception, cloud implementation has turned out to be a lot more complex than, there, that, than people have anticipated. Um, and uh, the Alkira solution uh, makes the process a lot easier, and I thought it would be good to share uh, what they can do with this audience. So with that, I'm going to hand it to you, David. All right. Well, thank you very much, Steve. Um, thank you for the introductions, and uh, again, uh, welcome, everybody. Um, you and I go way back, um, years and years ago, uh, back in the days that we were doing you know, SD-WAN with Viptela and uh, we always uh, value great partnerships, and you've you've definitely been uh, been a great partner uh, for us, right? Um, so uh, I think this last slide that that you talked about is, um, is 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 spot on to why why Alkira even came to to existence, right? It's it's really uh, fueled by that sort of digital cloud transformation that is occurring everywhere, and uh, and unfortunately um, the network is 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 kind of behind. And uh, really, not uh, not been living up to uh, to the challenge that um, that these transformations, these cloud transformations, these digital transformations, um, really put uh, put forth, right? Um, so um, let's talk about that a little bit more. And um, what is uh, what is Network's role in uh, in this whole uh, transformation? And what is Alkira's uh, take on that? And um, and hopefully. You guys, the audience, are going to find this uh, this interesting, and uh, and Steve, of course, is a great uh, a great partner of ours is um, um, is a good partner of yours to take you through uh, through this journey. Um, so let's take a look at what happens within uh, within the enterprise or within the IT space, right? And there's a couple of personas that uh, play a role in this digital transformation, this cloud uh, transformation. Of course, you have uh, the cloud architects, the folks that are dealing with uh, compute storage. Um, you know, virtualization, microservices, and uh, things like that, right? You have the application developers that are developing applications that uh, make use of the of the cloud infrastructure. And we talk about clouds. There's, of course, uh, different types of clouds. We uh, we have the infrastructure as a service clouds, which are the uh, three main ones: is the AWS, uh, Microsoft Azure, and GCP, right? But there's also, of course, the software as a service offerings. Uh, Office uh, 365 is by far the most popular one. But there's, of course, others: the Salesforce, Dropbox, Box, uh, unified communication uh, tools such as Zoom, uh, such as BrightTalk, right? So obviously today uh, with, uh, with the distributed workforce and everybody's kind of forced to uh, working remotely from home, um, the unified communications uh, becomes very important. That's another um, example of the software as a service uh, sort of type of offering. 
um, and of course the generic uh, generic internet applications, right? Uh, but when we look at these cloud architects and application developers, let's focus on uh, how their world looks like, um, specifically when they're consuming infrastructure as a service um, sort of uh, environments, right? And when you see what, uh, what, what these environments, what the AWS, uh, Azure, GCP, what they've done for them is they really made their lives uh, easy, right? And there's a couple of attributes here that you can see that uh, really speak to, uh, to the fact is that for the last, um, you know, what, decade, decade and a half, and these clouds have been a very convenient mechanism for, um, for adopting, you know, compute and storage, and virtualization, and, you know, microservices, you know, different application deployment um, models, and due to the fact that these clouds really provided this convenient infrastructure for that. So we really see that the time to service um, that it takes to basically take and, uh, and spin up the virtual machines in the cloud or request storage volumes or spin up Kubernetes clusters, things like that, really uh, play to the great advantage of the cloud and applications teams because this, this cloud uh, really provide a convenient platform for that. The capabilities that are uh, delivered on demand for those, uh, uh, for those types of uh, personas uh, is obviously something which is, which is of a great value is that you can have this capability um, whenever, whenever you need it. You need a virtual machine, you, you, know, you request it. You need a storage volume, you request it. Um, so this, this, this on-demand capabilities that are available to you uh, are, are, have been a sort of a key enabler. Another key enabler has been the, the software as a service, or as a service, I apologize, as a service consumption, right? Could be software as a service, could be infrastructure as a service, it could be platform as a service, right? Anything as a service consumption has been uh, one of the key uh, key things that the, uh, this cloud uh, infrastructure teams and application teams have been really enjoying. And of course, the scalability of it um, is it's not just requesting these resources, uh, having them delivered as a service and being available on demand, but it's also the idea behind scaling them up and down um, and, uh, and the ability to sort of expand, elastically expand uh, these this services have been very, very, cri very critical for these uh, for these personas. So that's all great, and we we're all aware that these things have been happening. But when we look at the the other side, and we look at the network and uh, and security to some uh, to some degree, right? These personas um, have been operating in a very different environment. And then the, their sort of cloud and application counterparts. And when we see how their world looks like, it looks very, very um, unlike the, the other guys, right? Uh, it's pretty much, in many times, it looks an absolutely opposite of what uh, the, cloud, uh, the cloud compute, cloud storage uh, teams have been, um, you know, have been enjoying for the last decade and a half. And there's a whole slew of things that uh, um, have been plaguing, you know, network and security when, it, when these teams look at, um, at the cloud adoption, right? It's, it's slow. Yeah, Dave, I had a client, yeah. I had a client who, who, it took them almost a year to fully get their, their cloud uh, implementation designed. It was, yeah. they thought it was going to be easy peasy, but it was not the case. <coughs> That's absolutely true, Steve. We have those. We have plenty of those examples where it takes anywhere between weeks to you know 12 to 18 months, depends on you know if this client has a very sort of structured approach and they want to kind of run the design um, the design through you know different teams and establish a certain as a protocol for uh, for in design implementation. So in these organizations, this kind of a larger enterprises. Um, I absolutely agree with you. This can take um, weeks and months and, uh, and, and over a year to, to get these things uh, get things uh, get these things done, right? Um, so yeah, um, so slow provisioning and uh, design phase, uh, very lengthy design uh, phases are something that we're seeing all over. Uh, all over the the cost of the infrastructure with some of the solutions, not all of the solutions. Some of the solutions are uh, a little bit uh, more streamlined from that standpoint, but some others they depend on you know physical hardware. I bet Steve, you've seen you've seen plenty of those as well. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. So it's a um, it's the it's a hardware bound uh, approach with uh, you know uh, procuring hardware gear, procuring circuits, procuring direct connects and express routes and dedicated interconnects into the uh, into this cloud provider. So very uh, lengthy and but also costly uh, costly exercise. 
Um, now, we're also seeing some interesting things around uh, uh, restricted uh, capabilities. So this cloud, even when you're managing to get your stuff into this cloud and you're kind of trying to operate in a cloud native um, manner, uh, you very, very quickly encounter things that you wouldn't, wouldn't expect uh, to see to see in the cloud, um, like the lack of uh, uh, security controls or comprehensive security controls, or the lack of such basic things as routing, right, or uh, or the ability to do global deployment. Uh, and when you talk about cross and multi-cloud, then it becomes even even worse because every cloud has its own uh, set of uh, sort of restrictions restrictions and the way that they, these capabilities are. Um, implemented. So when you try to go multi-cloud, these things even uh, become 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 worse. And um, uh, one one more thing, and uh, <clears throat> I think it also speaks to <clears throat> sorry to the heart of what um, what Steve does is that the skills gap, right? And this this network teams and security teams are uh, many times blindsided, but by by what waits for them in in the cloud world. And when the application teams and the compute teams say, well, you know, I've spun up my virtual machines. Uh, I've deployed my application, so I need connectivity. So you guys need to connect me to my corporate network, or you need to connect me across uh, regions of the cloud, or maybe I'm going multi-cloud and I have, you know, my uh, my app uh, app tier in uh, one cloud and my database tier in another cloud and my DevOps environment in a third cloud, and you guys need to connect me all together. So many times, this network and security teams are completely blindsided by uh, by these requests coming from uh, from the business side of uh, of the house, and um, and they start uh, sort of you know um, hectically attending trainings and getting getting certified or uh, you know uh, reading books, uh, watching videos. Or how the heck do I get? Ahead of the curve and, uh, and and understand how all of this works, right? And um, so it's it's really that unhappy person that sits there and is um, is something that we see a lot. <laughs> um, so what is it that we need? Um, it's for for the network and security folks, right? And for the um, uh, for these these infrastructure guys, what is it that we need uh, that? To happen for the network in order for these problems to be resolved, right? And what we need is what we all recognize. Uh, what I started with is that we are going through this digital and cloud transformation. It hasn't really started now, right? It started, you know, a decade and a half ago uh, when uh, when AWS came uh, came with uh, with their cloud offering, right? Um, so we really um, we're really looking at the network that needs to step up to this whole notion of. Uh, digitalization and the cloud, and we think about this as a cloud era, um, which, as I said, hasn't really started yesterday or a week ago. It's been going on for a long time. It's just the network and this, this infrastructure principles have not really been um, uh, been adopting that to that um, to that new new way of doing things. Right, um, the ship has sailed. And sort of the, this infrastructure, um, folks have kind of been left behind, and not not because they don't they don't know what they're doing, but it's just that there were not um, solutions elegant enough in the market to really enable um, this, these teams to to operate more, uh, you know, uh, with with these cloud attributes, with this uh, sort of agility in mind and time to service in mind and uh, simplicity in mind, and that's what we're going to uh, talk uh, more uh, more today about, right? But this is the idea of kind of bringing the network and leveling the play field between the network security and this infrastructure um, uh, personas to what happens on a compute side of things and a storage uh, side of things and virtualization and microservices and application deployments um, as it pertains to the cloud. <clears throat> so let's look at uh, what, what is this network for the cloud era. Before we talk about what, what Alkira does, what exactly is, is, um, is our view to, uh, to this network for the cloud era? What are these attributes that we're looking for, right? So the three big hitters that we are seeing across the board as we talk to, to our customers, and, and I think, Steve, you can, uh, you can probably um, sort of echo, echo some of these things too, is the things that we are hearing is uh, three main uh, main elements is that we want the network to be delivered in the same way in the same fashion <clears throat> that the cloud uh, are delivered for the other for the compute teams for the storage teams for the application teams because uh, everybody realizes is that this as a service delivery has been um, a driving force behind what these teams were able to achieve in the last decade and a half and what they continue to achieve uh, these days, 
right? So this as a service so, has yep. really been, yeah. No, as a service is the key. I mean, people are tired of waiting, uh, waiting three weeks, a month, forty-five days to get circuits delivered. You know, absolutely. The, the as a service model is really the wave of the future for for the cloud and for data centers. Absolutely, you, you're absolutely right. It's uh, it's the time that it takes, uh, the complexity that is behind it. These uh, these are all uh, kind of things that the networking the networking folks are really looking to go past that and say why why is it that my cloud uh, cloud counterparts like why are they uh, doing uh, doing these things in an, in in an agile fashion uh, in a way that really it goes hand in hand with what the the business is asking for and why am I struggling with understanding the nitty gritty details of how things are done and waiting for circuits to be delivered or cross connects to be delivered or things like that right and this really comes at at a, at a very um, sort of a significant contrast to the do it yourself approach which is really uh, piecemealing things together and bringing this small puzzles of, a, um, of the solutions and trying to kind of glue and stitch them together uh, in a do-it-yourself fashion, which is exactly what, uh, what the network and security uh, folks to some degree have been doing um, since, you know, since they've been tasked to go and solve the problems in, in a cloud space or just generally networking and security. The, the do-it-yourself approach has been really uh, predominant in, in that space. Um, so that's that's one uh, one one pinnacle of that. The second one is the ability to provision things really fast. So it's really nice that they're delivered uh, as a service. Uh, but if they're delivered as a service, but yet the provisioning the provisioning part of it is something that is very laborious, something that takes long time. Um, um, that that that's something that could sort of uh, undermine the uh, the whole delivery mechanism, right? So what we are seeing is that the ability to provision. We have something pretty interesting. is uh, is a is a single click provisioning, which we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, shortly. But the idea to really provision things in in a way that is not just an automated workflows. Um, which is really kind of a piecemealing it, like I have a workflow that does A, and I have a workload that does B, and I have a workload that does C, and then I will, I'm going to run through these different workflows, and each one of these workflows is going to get me to a certain point of configuration or, 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 or adoption, and then how do I stitch these workflows together? Because, because these workflows, they, 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 these automated workflows, they, they um, tend to basically just run through a certain scenario of achieving a certain task, but they're not driven by the intent of what of the overall um, sort of task that you're trying to achieve. It's not just one task at a time. It's an entire problem space that you're trying to solve. And doing this through these automated workflows really doesn't it doesn't get you get you a little bit closer to your target uh, target state, but doesn't quite resolve the the underlying problem is that you want really to have this intent driven approach. Of, uh, of solving the problem holistically rather than piecemealing this through automation flows. And, uh, and the last one is the, <clears throat> is the um, uh, readiness of this solution in, in a matter of uh, you know, minutes uh, and not in a matter of weeks and months. And I think uh, Steve and I, we, we, we already touched, uh, touched on that point. Um, now, when we, uh, when we go beyond these uh, three kind of main attributes, uh, we look at uh, some of the other things that really um, inspire this network uh, for the cloud era to be, to be compatible with the, with the way clouds operate, right? And there's a couple of interesting things here that we are seeing um, across the board as the attributes for this cloud network is, is this omnipresence, which is the, just like the cloud, uh, which is present everywhere. You can spin up your, your compute and storage and microservices in, in any region of any cloud. Um, and you're not really constrained by any geography. Uh, so is the network uh, is omnipresent uh, anywhere um, in any in any part of the world. So nothing is so that network is never never far from 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 any one of your locations, right? And then things like high capacity, the elasticity, uh, the ability to uh, to have an integrated security, high availability, and lastly this extensibility of the of the network right all of these are very familiar cloud uh, cloud attributes that are uh, vividly missing from many of the of the networks today and and particularly missing if you're looking at uh, how the network manifests itself uh, for for the cloud 
right? So it's really infusing these cloud-like attributes into, into the network, which is going to uplift uh, the network into this, uh, into this cloud era. All right, is there anything you wanted to add here? This, this slide, uh, I spent a couple of minutes talking about that, but just kind of your, your thoughts on that, Steve. Um, well, I mean, really, you know, delivering the network as a service, you know, and having it be highly available. So you're able to, is this something you're able to do today with diverse carriers, for example? Right. Yeah. So, I mean, the problem space is different. Um, there's, uh, there's, of course, the um, sort of the, the access part of the network, which is where some of the carriers, um, you know, play play a role, and that's what uh, what I know that you've been doing a lot, um, which is, you know, the SD WAN piece of it, the uh, um, sort of, you know, um, that that side of the house. And so, so you're right. Uh, multiple vendors, uh, multiple carriers, and multiple ways of connecting uh, connecting to the cloud from remote offices, branches, data centers, call locations, uh, things like that. So that. Uh, uh, it definitely plays uh, plays a role. Uh, they do have an as a service delivery, but again, uh, this is a little bit like uh, that idea that I was um, I was discussing as piecemealing it. Uh, is that you can't solve the entire networking problem by just solving a piece of it. Um, so even if you manage to get uh, a really kind of you know robust uh, WAN infrastructure going on, uh, and let's say SD WAN. Um, you're you're solving a big piece of a puzzle, but you're not solving the entire puzzle, right? Especially when you're when you're looking at what happens inside the clouds themselves, and when you're thinking about how the network services are, are integrated. So, so you're right, Steve. Some of those things are um, are addressed with um, uh, with uh, with the um, providers, circuit providers, uh, but yet there's there's a whole slew of other things that uh, that are really outside of their of their preview. So, all right, so, so how does how does Alkira address all this? Right. Well, that's that's a good question, Steve. Um, so oh, so I let's talk. Think so. Um, yeah, I, I you know you've been doing some homework. So um, so let's look at what what Alkira does, right? And uh, and I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time because I want to run you guys through uh, an actual kind of a customer scenario. So, but just as a refresher for some of you who have not. Uh, who have not been introduced to Alkira, who have not heard about what Alkira does. So we're really trying to uh, operate in these principles that we've outlined uh, uh, up until now, this cloud-like attributes, this ability to uplift the network and security along with it um, to, to become this really enabler for the cloud rather than something that is being dragged along, always behind, always takes time, always, always asks for budget things like that. How can we make the networking and security the, the hero of the day? How can we make, and we, by the way, interesting thing is that one of the customers we're working with, we've heard an interesting sentiment is that the networking team has transitioned to the state um, after they have deployed um, Alkira solution is that they've transitioned to the state that the networking team is waiting for the compute teams, because the compute team came and said, well, we have this thing on our, you know, this task we need to do, we need to deploy this and this applications or this and this workloads, and the networking team was ready before the cloud team, the cloud compute team was ready with their workloads. So this is something that, that, is, that is, well, I wouldn't say maybe unheard of, but something that, that is very, very rarely occurring, that the networking team, and especially for the cloud space, uh, is running faster than the uh, than the cloud uh, cloud compute teams, right? Something that is you don't hear that that every day. Um, so yeah, I, I thought, not at all. In, yeah, an interesting an interesting anecdote. Um, but um, so go, coming back to what uh, what we do, right? So uh, think of uh, an Alkira as um, as a service, right? Uh, we we operate this service. What you see, this blue platform. Um, it is a network. Uh, we call this entire solution an Alkira Cloud Services Exchange. It comprises of several elements, but one of the most fundamental, one of the most important elements is the network itself, the network that is delivered as a service, which is this blue, uh, blue platform. It consists of uh, um, um, cloud exchange points. Uh, we call them uh, CXPs uh, or cloud exchange points. These are, this is a completely virtualized stack uh, for point of presence or mini data center or virtual data center or virtual co-location, whatever kind of, whatever description resonates with you, but it's a completely virtualized stack with, with its own uh, data plane, control plane, management plane capabilities. Um, These uh, cloud exchange points are not a single VNF. This is not just an instance of a router that just builds tunnels. 
right? This is, this is going far beyond that. This is an entire infrastructure, entire software infrastructure in order to be, uh, to be able to deliver this network as a service. Uh, just like I said, not a single router uh, with maybe like a firewall next to it, right? That's, that's something that we don't see as an appropriate for, uh, for, this, uh, for this delivery mechanism. Um, so this, uh, this, uh, this platform, right, consists of the network and the uh, cloud uh, exchange points that are distributed everywhere, and then the resources that a customer has, uh, which are an on-premise resources and the cloud resources. So here we're talking about, um, you know, si remote sites, data centers, uh, even co-locations, uh, remote users, or even SD-WAN fabrics. So we, we play along very nicely with, uh, with SD-WAN, and if somebody has an SD-WAN, or somebody has a Cisco SD-WAN, um, they, um, they can very seamlessly and in a very automated way um, make, make use of the Alkira, Alkira offering and just extend their SD-WAN network into, uh, into the cloud and basically get this sort of a um, global cloud connectivity with uh, some additional things we're going to talk about in regards to services, visibility, governance, things like that. So play along very nicely to, uh, to, uh, with SD-WAN, which um, I know that, Steve, you, you always like to hear that. Um, oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> right. So, and then the clouds, of course, we, we dig deep into the clouds. Uh, all the cloud workloads across the three major cloud providers, um, they're all uh, automatically onboarded into these uh, cloud exchange points based on their geographies. And, uh, of course, everything is networked together. Once it's all connected, everything is networked together with uh, these cloud-like attributes, right? Um, now, SaaS and inter in internet applications, that's something that, is, uh, uh, that we provide out of this uh, um, network, um, which allows you access into the internet and, and SaaS applications, right? Now, um, this entire solution is, is operated through what we call an Alkira CSX portal, which is the Cloud Services Exchange portal, uh, which is your window into this entire, uh, into this entire network, right, uh, which is where you perform all of your operational tasks, right, all of your uh, designing, um, all of your provisioning, all of your troubleshooting and monitoring, and we have a very comprehensive set of, uh, of this day two operation tools inside. So even though the network is delivered as a service to you, you are having a full, uh, full visibility into how the network is performing, uh, what are the, some of the uh, sort of performance characteristics, what is the uh, health of the infrastructure, uh, what is the health of your connections, what is the uh, flow intelligence inside, this whole set of troubleshooting tools. So you really uh, are in complete driver's seat of this network. It's just that we have completely eliminated all of these things that you had to know about uh, about the network and how the clouds operate in order to provision that because everything has been extremely simplified. So you have kind of the best of both worlds of this extreme simplification uh, with this um, sort of full enterprise-grade uh, enterprise uh, visibility, troubleshooting, monitoring um, capabilities, right? Um, so, so that's great. Um, so let's look now at um, a specific um, case study. So um, I'll give you basically an example of, of a customer, right, or some like a typical customer, and, and I bet uh, many of you can resonate with that uh, with that design. I know that uh, uh, Steve, you for sure can uh, um, can resonate with that. Um, so uh, the customer's you know starting point is um, is a wide area network built on SD WAN. We see that a lot, right, um, coming from uh, coming from Viptela, uh, being the same team behind uh, behind Viptela. Obviously, we are very much aware of the impact that we had on the market uh, with Viptela and how SD WAN is basically taking the entire uh, WAN market by storm. So we see SD WANs a lot out there, <clears throat> and. Um, and this SD-WAN really connects the um, remote sites, the campuses, the data centers, the co-locations um, together, right? Um, now, when we keep on evolving this design, what, uh, what the customer has is they have some remote users. And that is uh, absolutely true for, um, for these days, right? It was true six months ago, and it was true a year ago, but it's absolutely true today where the remote uh, users and the remote workforce really uh, takes takes over this this kind of connectivity mechanisms and how do those remote users connect? Well, they typically connect into the data centers to, into some sort of a VPN concentrators, right? Um, now, what about uh, access to the internet, right? What about access to my Office 365? Well, 
SD WAN did a great job with direct internet access, right? So direct internet access straight from the remote uh, remote sites, uh, no backhauling through the data center. But what about security? So how do I secure that? So many customers have chosen a secure web gateway or security internet, uh, secure internet gateway, right? There's, a, there's different offerings out there. Some have decided to deploy firewalls right there at the branch offices, uh, which could be standalone appliances or virtualized appliances or integrated into the SD-WAN CPE, so whatever it is. So some have chosen that. Many have chosen uh, secure web gateways and secure internet gateways as um, as a means to secure that uh, direct internet access. Uh, public clouds. So what happens to the public clouds? Well, great. Public clouds are connected to co-locations. Many times we see co-locations as being uh, an, uh, an on-ramp into those clouds, uh, public clouds for the pure reason is that co-locations uh, provide you really that um, you know, high bandwidth um, connectivity into those cloud providers through um, through a dedicated connections. AWS has Direct Connect, uh, Microsoft Azure has Express Route, Google has dedicated uh, Interconnect. So these are all private means of connectivity into the cloud access uh, through the call locations. And uh, of course, security is right there behind the network uh, and sometimes in front of the network. Um, and, and of course, I need a firewall because I can't really secure my, my cloud access without the firewall. So many times uh, we're seeing uh, co-locations have these firewalls inserted uh, in there uh, in either physical or virtual form factor in order to secure this, uh, this uh, cloud, uh, cloud access. Now what happens across clouds? So many times we're seeing across cloud traffic uh, still goes through co-locations. Uh, which is really, really inefficient, kind of takes you in and out of the, of the cloud if you want to traverse different regions of the same cloud or if you're going multi-cloud and uh, I need to kind of hop out, hop in into the cloud and then maybe subject it to this firewall in this co-location. So not, not the most efficient me mechanism, we see, we see that, but many times we're seeing a different approach of cloud transits, which is, you know, let me create this um, cloud transits inside the clouds that are going to be connecting my cloud regions together or my, or my uh, multiple clouds together. And when they're connecting that, then I need a firewall in there. So uh, there you have the implementations of the firewalls inside, uh, inside the cloud, right? So this um, public cloud adoption is kind of a two, twofold um, at, at times, uh, is that we have this co-location strategy and we have this cloud transit strategy. Um, now, what about the internet access, right? So, uh, so internet could be done, uh, like we said, through the secure web gateways directly from the branch office, uh, but it could also be done through the data centers. And uh, if it's done through the data center, of course, there's a firewall to secure uh, to secure that uh, to secure that access. And why do you need this internet access at the data center? Well, many times your partners connect like that. And these are your business partners, or this could be mergers and acquisitions that are leveraging either internet or uh, some WAN circuits in order to connect into your infrastructure. And so, so these are your business partners connecting to you, and where do they connect to? Well, they connect to the data center. Uh, why do they connect to the data center? Because that's where your, uh, that's where your compute is, that's where your applications are, right? Um, some of them. Uh, this is where your security is, right? So, so many times we're seeing that. So that's, uh, that's interesting. And then you have the slew of the management tools, management and monitoring tools in order to, uh, to monitor the entire infrastructure. SD-WAN has its own tools. Uh, clouds have their own tools. Secure web gateways have their own tools. Uh, firewalls have their own tools. Um, remote access users and remote access VPN solutions may have their own tool, right? So really a collection of management and monitoring tools that allow, you, allow the customer to operate that. So very typical, uh, very typical picture, uh, maybe, maybe a lot of concepts that are uh, kind of brought together. Maybe not everything is present in, in every single deployment, but we're certainly seeing you know, pieces and elements of that uh, uh, being, uh, being done across the board. Um, I, I think, Steve, you probably have seen you know, a variant of, uh, of things like that. Oh, yeah, most definitely, most definitely. <clears throat> yeah. But let's talk about the challenges that these people run into. 
Right, exactly. And, and the challenges, we've outlined some of these challenges, so I'm going to kind of briefly uh, go through those, is that uh, we have the challenge around uh, different security domains, right? We talked about the firewalls that are securing, you know, cloud access or inter-cloud or multi-cloud connectivity, uh, business partner access, and then you have this direct internet access that ca happens from the remote sites, right? So that secure web gateway or secure internet gateway has a different security domain, right? It's a different, different policy engine, right? So you end up with this disparate security domains across, across the environment, uh, be that, um, you know, direct internet access or cloud access or data center access, ingress access, egress access, all of those are different security domains, not uniform, uh, not under the same management uh, paradigm, not under the same sort of uh, security policy. Uh, which, is, which is a real challenge for security folks to enforce the security policy across such a diverse environment, right? Uh, now, uh, right along this uh, disparate security domains is a proliferation of these inspection points because I need to secure all my ingress and egress points out of my network. So not only uh, am I having different security domains, but I'm also uh, now having a different uh, um, sort of proliferation of this, of this inspection points, right? Data centers, call locations, cloud transits. Uh, so definitely administratively uh, challenging for, for organizations to operate like that. Now, we talked about uh, earlier about the, the challenges around uh, expertise and skills and limitations that, uh, that come with the cloud deployments, right? And this could be uh, things as, as basic as, as routing uh, or it could be a little bit more advanced as how do I get visibility into, my, into what my, how my network is behaving in the cloud or how to overcome some of the scalability challenges. Um, so, so these things are, are a big, uh, big headache for, for the network and, uh, and security teams, right? Uh, ingress routing, uh, another interesting thing we're seeing is basically is a DMZ environment. How do I, as my applications move from data center to the cloud, uh, where's my DMZ today? Is my DMZ still in a data center? Is my DMZ moving to the cloud? Uh, how do I secure this uh, DMZ access? And um, so many times we're seeing uh, that this DMZ kind of gets left behind because that's where the firewall is. So firewall left behind in a data center, DMZ is in a data center, yet my application or pieces of my <clears throat> application have moved into the cloud. So now I have this really suboptimal traffic is that my traffic hits my data center, uh, then travels through my SD-WAN fabric in order to hit maybe co-location and then get into the public cloud, right? In, and all of that just, just to hit this, you know, externally exposed application that now resides uh, not in the data center but in the public cloud. So definitely a degree of, uh, of inefficiency, inefficiency there, right? Uh, the scalability and availability challenges around the remote access, uh, which has really have become apparent in the last uh, in the last six months or so that we've all been operating in this new mode, um, is, is people have been scrambling. It's like, well, you know, I, I never built my network for this type of scale, right? I never, I never anticipated to have, you know, uh, 3x amount of users connecting remotely uh, in one single day all of a sudden without any warning, right? Uh, so am I, do I have enough capacity on my VPN concentrators? Do I... Um, do I have enough licensing for that? So, so the challenges around uh, scalability and availability of it, because you know my users used to be kind of in a predicted locations uh, because I knew where they are in the remote offices and campuses. I have sort of good handle on that, and some of them were working remotely, but not all of them. And now that majority of them work remotely, they're spread all over the place, right? So, how, so my VPN infrastructure was never really built in mind. Um, with uh, with this sort of like dispersed uh, dispersed environment, right? So definitely definitely a challenge. And uh, <clears throat> lastly, um, that goes without saying, uh, this uh, proliferation of this uh, management and monitoring tools that really really make day to operation uh, a huge headache. That's in addition to everything else we talked about. This just the pure management and provisioning and troubleshooting. Uh, elements of the network is, is extremely, extremely painful because everything is managed through their own individual element managers. And uh, so, so, as you can see, um, it's pretty messy. So what would that customer do uh, with, with Alkira, 
right? And uh, uh, we, we've actually spoken uh, quite a fair amount already about uh, the advantages that, uh, yeah. that this you know, network for the cloud era brings and what Alkira specifically brings in there. And all we need to do now is just you know, tie it all together and say how does that all uh, play itself uh, within, a, within an individual customer environment. So the first thing is really I want to establish this global network, right? If you remember, one of these cloud-like attributes that we really wanted to achieve was the omnipresence. <clears throat> Just like the clouds are everywhere, I want my network to be everywhere, and I want this to be happening right now. I don't have time to wait for circuits to be delivered. I may not even have time to wait until I deploy SD-WAN, which is going to make life easier once it's deployed, but I need to deploy it. So um, I need this network now, right now, because that's what my business wants. They want me to deliver connectivity into this particular you know, region or particular part of the world in the next 48 hours. I don't have a presence there. I don't have a site there. I don't have a data center there. I don't have uh, equipment that I can, uh, I can you know, I have available that I can ship there and install there and configure it. Like all of that is just a, just a legacy approach that we really want to move past and say it's everywhere. It's everywhere you choose to because it is a service. And as a service, it's available everywhere. Just choose your location anywhere, and you immediately have this high-speed, low-latency global network spun up anywhere you need without you worrying about shipping gear, configuring gear, buying circuits, or anything, anything like that, which is just by itself, that is a fundamental shift from the way that, um, the way that networking was done, uh, was done uh, up until now. And uh, once the networking is up um, and you have this global network, now you're really talking about just plugging things into it. Right? And these are the things that we already talked about. All of your resources, everything that you need, all of your sites and branches and data centers and co-locations and your remote users and your partners, everything that we talked about um, in that slide, in the challenge slide, um, even your SD-WAN fabrics, if you have deployed one of these, right? All of that is your existing, um, think about this as an existing on-premise uh, resources that you just you know, seamlessly connect into uh, into this global network that you just spun up in a matter of in a matter of minutes, right? Um, and then on the other side, you have your clouds, right? You have all of your AWS and Azure and GCP and Internet exits, and all of that is also plugging into your into your network, right? Into your new network, which is which is as a service delivered from from Alkira. Right. So it's not just the network, it's not just the core of the network that, that is spun up in any location without you having any presence in there in, in a matter of minutes, but it's also that all of your resources can now be uh, plugged into this network uh, also in a matter of minutes. And, and, and some really cool things is that there is no software that you need to deploy because this is delivered as a service. There's nothing you need to download. There's nothing that you need to install. There's nothing that you need to, uh, to provision from any of the cloud provider marketplaces or otherwise. It, this entire core infrastructure is completely pre-built and delivered, delivered as a service to you. So there's no software whatsoever. There is no hardware to deploy unless you have your additional, your ex existing hardware that you want to, uh, uh, that you need to have, or maybe you're spinning up a new physical site. Well, of course, you need a hardware for that, but that's kind of the on-prem side of things. From the networking standpoint and from this global network and a cloud network standpoint, there is no hardware. There's also no cloud skills, which we flagged quite a few times as, as being a, uh, one of the inhibitors, right? So there's no cloud skills that, uh, um, that, that you need to acquire because, again, it's delivered as a service. All of the limitations of the clouds have been completely mitigated by this, uh, by this uh, platform, by this what we call this as, as a unified network platform, uh, which is that offering uh, from Alkira that you are, you are connecting to, right? Um, your services are tightly integrated into this network through the network services marketplace. So should you need to put a firewall somewhere, it's as easy as choosing it from the marketplace and selecting which one of the uh, cloud exchange points uh, this, this firewall goes into, and the firewall gets provisioned, uh, the traffic steering occurs, the symmetry is maintained, uh, and, and you just define policies that govern which traffic goes to the services. So remember, no proliferation of this uh, um, security inspection points and no, uh, no disparate uh, security policy domains. Everything is uniform uh, because it's being delivered in a uniform way, again, as a service. 
uh, things like segmentation. Uh, we didn't quite touch on that earlier, but segmentation is, is a key for, um, for WAN connectivity, and it's also key for the cloud um, as you want to segregate your different, uh, uh, different organizational units or different departments as they uh, access uh, resources in the cloud or across clouds. Right? Um, we talk about, talked about DMZ environment that, uh, uh, that um, is many times kind of left behind in a data center. Well, not, not any longer. You can have this DMZ environment extended inside this, um, uh, this new network, right? And then your resources are connected into this, uh, into this uh, uh, network. Uh, so is your DMZ uh, is also in, uh, part of this network, and it's secure with the services, with the network services such as firewalls that are deployed in this network. So it kind of all comes, uh, uh, comes together, and it's no longer backhauled uh, from, through your data center into your cloud uh, just to make sure that your DMZ happens, right? Uh, similarly to partner connectivity, right? Again, everything is connected into this, uh, into this, uh, into this unified platform, right? So, so is the partner connectivity connected to it? So once the partner is onboarded uh, as, a, as a connector into this, uh, into this network and into the closest CXP to where they are residing, they are part of your network, right? From now on, they have connectivity. You want to, you want to pass them through the firewall. Great, go create a policy in the interface, a couple of clicks away, and the traffic from that partner is sent through the firewall before it's allowed to go anywhere else, right? So all of these things become extremely simplified, and ultimately, um, the, the entire operational angle uh, of this entire solution becomes extremely streamlined because of the fact that this is a service. I keep, keep on stressing the same points, right? But it really all predicated on the fact that this entire solution, it's not a piece of the solution, it's this entire solution is delivered to you as a unified network platform, and all of these things that you connect to it are just basically connectors, uh, but the network itself is, is fully governed by this the same principles that we uh, we talked about that are uh, really these cloud-like attributes and this enterprise-grade uh, capabilities that have been um, integrated into this network in, in regard to you know visibility and segmentation and network service insertion and traffic symmetry and and intent-based policies and all this good stuff. So really taking this whole concept uh, that we talked about and applying this. Uh, as a one holistic solution uh, to to solve all of the all of the customers uh, problems that we flagged so it's pretty cool i think it's pretty cool um, how how and, hard is it to learn to use there yeah i mean um uh, that's a good question uh, so like i mentioned um, everything is done through the uh, cloud services exchange uh, portal which is the which is the intuitive interface uh, think about this as uh, it's kind of similar to software as a service uh, offering. You have a portal, you log in, you create an account for yourself, and you, um, you basically get, uh, get to the canvas, design canvas. You start designing your network. You start designing your network services in literally drag and drop fashion, moving pieces of visually moving pieces uh, on the screen. Uh, and at the end of this process, you have one single button that basically you press, and that instantiates that entire network that you have um, um, you have modeled uh, on top of this Alkira's unified uh, network platform. And so the entire process of design is up to you, how fast you click and how much you know uh, what you want to achieve. Uh, and that can be in, in a matter of minutes or it could, it could be in a matter of hours. Depends, you know, kind of how long you want to spend on this interface. But once you have described your intent, um, then this single provision button really kind of kicks it off and uh, most of the networks are really delivered in under an hour. And when I say delivered under an hour, this entire thing, including the global footprint and including all of this uh, connectivity and enterprise-grade capabilities, all of that together, not in individual workflows that you need to kind of stitch together, but this entire solution holistically is delivered with, uh, uh, within an hour. Right, so, wow. so the learning the learning curve of that is is an absolutely uh, minimum to none. Uh, Terrific. It's very 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 intuitive, <laughs> um, very very intuitive uh, to to use. Um, I mean, the key takeaways. I, I think, um, Steve, you've uh, you've proven yourself uh, to be a great partner for many of our customers in the past life and in, in, with Viptela and in the current. Um, current life with uh, with Alkira, so definitely uh, encourage uh, folks to uh, to work with you 
uh, on the transformation for wide area network and, and the cloud. And uh, we on our side, obviously, will make sure that uh, we stay true to uh, to everything that we talked about and uh, all these uh, elements of cloud and uh, multi-cloud and on-prem and networking in minutes with integrated uh, enterprise-grade security, uh, really simplified one-click provisioning, you know, operational tool set, and of course, uh, the one of the key things of our delivery is, is as a service delivery, which we really, really view this as where the entire networking stack is really evolving to, because it's the only way it can evolve in order to keep up with what's happening in the world. Uh, otherwise, we'd be all stuck in, in the middle, middle ages with, uh, with our compute as well. It was only, it was only made where it is today um, because, of the, uh, because of the cloud, uh, cloud attributes and the cloud delivery uh, as a service, and that's where we're taking, uh, that's where we're taking the network. So um, having said that, um, I guess they reach out to you um, reach out to us if, if you want to see a live demonstration of everything we talked about. We'll be more than happy. Please reach out to uh, to Steve. Uh, please reach out uh, to us, and uh, we'll we'll show you how things are done. And uh, yeah, the, de the demonstration is definitely impressive. <coughs> yep, that, that absolutely. I can say. Yeah, one of the things sure. that we really have seen is that uh, um, it, 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 it's 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 like shocking when people see this, they, their eyes open, and it's like I I never thought that this existed, right? I never thought that I could operate my network and security uh, elements in in such a way, right? This is this is a huge eye opener from uh, from pretty much across the board, everybody that that we've spoken to, from small to medium to large, uh, everywhere, something very very unique. Exactly. Well, very good, Dave. So, yeah. <clears throat> this was uh, this was interesting, and um, and I encourage anyone to uh, give a call to uh, SD WAN experts or to Alkira uh, to learn more about the solution. Uh, it'll definitely uh, help facilitate your cloud implementation, uh, save you a lot of headaches, and uh, ultimately, ultimately uh, save you money in the long run. Uh, Dave, anything else to add? No, this is it. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you for hosting me on uh, on your webinar, Steve. Looking forward to okay. more uh, more collaboration. Thanks, everyone. And this will be available for viewing at another time on Bright Talk. This will be saved, and uh, we'll send you details yep. on on how to view it further. Okay. Right. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Bye bye.